Greetings from Fin Study Club. My name is Ankur Kulsreesht. Welcoming all viewers to this very important session on the fair value model which is used in the valuation of passive investments which is part of your 626th reading of financial reporting and analysis. Now before looking at this session I would recommend the viewers to look at one of the videos which we have recorded wherein we have discussed the overview of the passive investment. Before looking at the fair value model directly, I would want the viewers to get a very very strong handle on the two very very important formulas. The first formula is of the realized gain. The other one is of the unrealized gain. Now here obviously gain will include loss in it. Now the difference between the two before coming to the formula I would like to explain the difference which is that once you are holding an asset let's say you have purchased an asset and you have also sold it that means whatever gain or loss that we were talking about has been converted into cash that gain is known as a realized gain that means realized in cash the unrealized part is that portion of the gain on the asset which we are still holding so to speak this is a gain only in the books we have not converted into the cash portion so the formula of the two is fairly simple it says the realized gain is equal to the cash sale price as reduced by the cash purchase price as in uh, you know uh, 100 was the purchase price and 120 is the sale price so in effect we have gained plus 20 fairly simple what is unrealized gain is dependent on the market value because the point is that we are still holding that asset so on the balance sheet date or on the valuation date uh, we are going to put a, a number against it in terms of the market value as reduced by the cash purchase price so uh, let's look at the fair value model and the first example wherein we will try to uh, you know understand the realized gain uh, or loss part now obviously just a very very quick recap for the fair value model uh, the model says that whatever is a subject matter in which case uh, in my case it is passive investments right now so the model says whatever is a subject value we are trying to put a number in terms of the fair value uh, on the calculation date and that's the value which will be used for my balance sheet so it's always marked to market and whatever is the change in the fair value compared to the previous you know fair value recorded in the books whatever is the delta uh, goes to the P&L or income statement so uh, let's just look at you know the first example here uh, so you know I have uh, almost like uh, four examples in my session so let's go to, to them one by one the first example here uh, talks about the realized gain model so let me just clean the slate for you so the example says that PQR purchased one share of Apple on 21st of October for $45 a very very important aspect is what should be uh, the transaction on uh, the date of purchase so I'm going to explain that with this magical equation which says the net change on the asset liability or capital so your cash would have gone down by 45 and your assets on the other hand would have gone up by 45 in form of investment in Apple okay now uh, on the date of 21st of October your investment is appearing on uh, uh, a value of 45 what is the impact on different financial statements if the share was sold on 26th October five days later for 40 45 uh, or 49 so again I'm going to take help of this magical equation a is equal to L plus C Now the key question is on the date of sale my share was valued at 45 so in any case my investment worth rupees 45 is going to go down and if in case of case a my cash worth rupees 40 
is going to come up. So there is a net loss on the asset side worth rupees 5. This loss is the realized loss because now you have sold uh, this particular asset and in all in any scenario in all the scenarios this realized loss always go to P and L. Let's just look at what happens when you sell uh, you know this asset at uh, 45. So I'm going to again take help of A is equal to L plus C uh, here. So my investments was recorded at 45. So that goes down. The cash equal to 45 has come up. So there is no change practically on the asset side. Uh, you know, something worth 45 has been sold for 45. So effectively no gain, no loss. So that's pretty much the case here. Let's take the third example, which is going to be interesting, wherein we are saying that an asset worth rupees 45 has been sold for 49. So in effect, my asset worth 45 goes down. My cash worth rupees 49 comes up and this gain of $4 is uh, my realized gain here uh, goes to the income statement. So the fair value model in any case says that the realized gain has to go to the P&L account. Well, what is also very important is that the unrealized gain in case of fair value model also go to the, uh, you know, P&L account. There is no scenario of OCI. So let's just try and understand another example wherein there is unrealized gain or loss. That means we are not, we haven't sold the asset as yet. So I have taken the same uh, base case which says one share of Apple purchased for 45. So on this date, I have included my investment in my books at 45. My cash goes down by 45 and that's how my A is equal to L plus C gets tallied. That's on 21st of October, pretty much similar to the previous example. But what is different right now is the fact that these shares have been held by the company till the year end when the market value let's assume is 40. So again the key point is the asset which was of 45 will be valued at uh, the market price which is 40 so effectively you are reducing the value of the asset by five dollars and uh, uh, since the share hasn't been sold, this is an unrealized loss in case of a uh, fair value model again goes to the P&L account. There is no scenario of OCI. So this is unrealized loss which goes to the P&L. In case of the market price being equal to the purchase value, there is no change on 31st of December. Uh, therefore, no asset, no gain or loss recognized. Now, in a lucky scenario where your market value of the asset goes up, then you are basically writing up the asset by plus two. Your asset on 21st of October was 45. You are writing it up by plus two. This is an unrealized gain of two which is again part of your P and L. So short point is that in case of fair value model, the unrealized gain always, always go to your P and L, which is known as income statement. Moving on to the third example, which is again very, very important, which is actually a complete example, should I say like that. Herein, I had purchased one share of Apple on 21st of October for 45. That means the value initially recorded was 45. Uh, the market value on the closing day, the fair value uh, was 40. That means uh, it would have been marked down by $5 and this would have been transferred uh, to the income statement. The value appearing on 31st of December must be equal to $40. This example takes the story forward. It says, what is the impact on different financial statement of PQR if the share was sold uh, by PQR on 5th of January? Now, what we need to understand is that the share being sold uh, is in the second year. So therefore, in the first year, there still will be some kind of an unrealized uh, loss in this case of $5. 
it's only in the second year which is 2014 uh, has this been realized so uh, if I make the balance sheet of 2013 my share is appearing at $40 and uh, if I make the balance sheet for 2014, of course, the share will not appear uh, because it has been sold. So let's just try and understand the profit and loss part of, uh, you know, this share in, in three scenarios, uh, which are the value, uh, the sale price being 49. So taking it step by step, my cash would have gone up by 49 my investment was previously valued in the books at 40 so to speak there is a gain of 9 which will go to the PNL account if I look at both the years put together a purchase price of 45 has been sold for 49 the net gain of 4 now see carefully out of which there was a loss of 5 that was marked in the previous year so therefore sum total the to, to make the sum total as plus 4 there has to be a gain of plus 9 to be marked this year let's just see what will happen if the sale price uh, is 47 my cash is going to come by 47 my investments are going to go uh, by 40 which is the previously balance sheet value and this plus 7 of gain uh, is going to go in my PNL account so a very very simplistic point here is that any kind of gain or loss be it realized or unrealized in case of fair value model is going to go uh, to the income statement there's absolutely no role of OCI if I were to make a similar statement here I would say uh, a total gain of plus 2 out of which minus 5 was booked last year therefore a net of plus 7 needs to be booked this year what is very interesting to understand is what will happen if the sale price is 44 now my cash is going to come in worth rupees 44 my assets are going to go down worth rupees 40 and there is a plus 4 of gain uh, you know you have 45 asset the cash price being sold for 44 there is a, a net of uh, minus 1 uh, which was minus 5 last year and uh, therefore I will have to book a plus 4 so this plus 4 this year is uh, going to go to the P&L account so effectively this is the third case this is the second case and this is your first case so uh, you know in the, so the summary point on this fair value model are that your any kind of gain be it realized or unrealized every time whenever you market to market or uh, make a sale is going to go down to PNL there's absolutely no role of OCI we hope that these videos were useful in understanding the fair value model which is applied on the marketable securities should you have any feedback or any query we would be very very happy to uh, help you if you email that to us at finstudyclub at the red gmail.com this was Ankur Kulsresht. I look forward to speak to you in my forthcoming sessions. Thank you very much.